Hello. Welcome, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Let's give it a little bit. Just need to check some things. Just refresh. And hopefully our chat will pick up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, give me a second. Here we go. I just need to check on some things, see if our chat is working. Sometimes the chat messes up and I have to uh, refresh that. Give me a second here. And now it should work. Now it works, yes. So welcome everyone. I don't know if uh, you've heard, but there's a party going on. Gary Gilberts is an interesting character. He plays free to play mostly, but just out of nowhere, this guy he he single-handedly brought back the uh, the house party meta. And so you know we had to roll up with some fashion skate. So I've been hanging out here a little bit, some interesting goings on, uh, a lot of people just came to uh, hang out and there's one little thing I should check on. Parknar. <laughs> when I was here earlier today. There were like five or six people trapped down here, and they just started a cult. Is that the new zombie axe? Wonder how that is. Probably not. Let's see if we can't get the cult back up and running. <laughs> this one person determined to kill the uh, kill the dragon, and we're stuck in there we go. Now we're out of there. And it's it's a nice uh, nice little party going on here. We've got the uh, the skillers over there. 
Let's see, what what has Gary Gilbert done? Nothing? Boss log, nothing. Champion's log. I don't know what that means. Collection log. Uh, maybe clues? Nope, hasn't even done a single beginner clue. Other. Miscellaneous? Anything? Hispori seeds. Huh. And a Xerix. Really not much going on in this. Counters? What does counters mean? Chompy kills, not start. Man, how does Gary Gilbert afford such an opulent manor with nothing... To their name. Yeah, some quests done. What's this? Admire gold? What does that mean? A hundred million of your finest coins. Okay. Well, that's the party going on. Seems like a lot of people are having a good time. Uh, but this stream, I would like to uh, hopefully get a, a pet, a new pet. Uh, Thermonuclear Smoke Devil is the, the one we're after tonight. And uh, hopefully we can get that. So let's get on out of here. I don't need these dragon claws. Just draw. Oh yes, they're valuable. I don't care. They were fashionscape and fashionscape only. Uh, pick up the hell puppy. Put you away. My house is much less optimized for uh, scaling and whatnot, and more optimized for just my own personal use. And I think that's just fine. I don't expect to, uh, to need to do much uh, posting. Put away all of our fashionscape, and I could either do the mage method or the melee method. I think I'll stick with the mage method for now. Because I use far less supplies when I do that. Saturated heart, and... Okay. Ooh, let's pick out our anglerfish. And go ahead and... Get over to Castle Wars. I had a, a, a bit of a scare the other day. I was uh, asleep, and when I woke up, I saw on my computer that uh, somebody, probably my dog, had jumped onto the uh, jumped onto the keyboard and almost started streaming, which would have been embarrassing of just a, a stream of me being asleep. But, you know, didn't happen, and we are thankful for that. But I would have probably just deleted the stream anyway. Nothing really embarrassing could happen while I'm just unconscious. And I don't have a webcam, so you wouldn't see me, like, all groggy and barely awake.
but this is the method for killing the thermonuclear smoke devil. Just far cast. And already got two prayer potions. I'm gonna drop an angler and eat one. Then freeze. And you have to be a certain number of tiles away to far cast, because your range on long range is one longer than the smoke devil's range. Okay, I'll drop two of those, pick one of those, and grab the coins. And you kind of want to freeze them quickly because it can move closer and then messes up the safe spot. And it looks like I'm going to have to refill my uh, Sanguinesti staff sometime soon. Take the coins. Eat an anglerfish, pick one of them up. Freeze the guy. Hey, it's good to see you too, Papa Smurf. How you doing? Have you checked out the uh, the house party going on in World 330? I hear they're giving out free snail helms over there. We are over drop rate for both the Kraken pet and the thermonuclear smoke devil pet, so hopefully we get to see one of those today. <laughs> How have you been, Papa Smurf? It's been a while, I haven't been streaming as much. Um, been working a lot on my classes and everything. But we're just about done, so hopefully we can get back into streaming more. RS3 is kind of dry. Oh, that's too bad. I'm, uh... I haven't been following the updates with RS3, but I am very excited for Barlamore coming out in five days with uh, a bunch of new content. A whole new continent of content. That's a mouthful. But uh, we're finally getting capybaras in the game. Uh, a new dog you can pet. Um, some exotic birds you can ride around. I'm very much focused on the animals. Gas station hot dog. Um, okay. Gas station hot dogs is less likely to give you uh, terrible indigestion and parasites. But, you know, I like to live risky, so I'll, I'll go for the sushi. They haven't done any updates on RS3 at all this year, except for one tiny quest. That is... There's so much that I like about RuneScape 3. Um, I really liked Invention. I thought Invention was a really cool... Currently at this... Okay, for your safety, get a hot dog. Don't get... <laughs> Don't get sushi. In that case, get a get a hot dog. You, you know that the hot dog's probably been rolling on that little heater thing for like three days straight, but it's probably still safer than the sushi. Um, yeah, but I really liked Invention. I thought that was a, a, a good item sink, and it 
it, it encouraged you to train other skills as well. Smurf is living risky, he's gonna get the sushi. I also really like summoning, but I think that's pretty obvious. I like having a little follower help you out. Um, summoning was really fun. But, uh, I haven't played RuneScape 3 in a long time. I am about to die, jeez. Mountain Dew Blah 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 ba Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Do they sell that now? Like just straight up? I I remember back when they only sold it at like Taco Bell. And uh if you're aware of uh, Operation Soda Steel, that uh that old 4chan thread of a guy who invented a device to siphon Baja Blast into a backpack full of soda bottles. That was... That was really fun. Zero Ultra Monster. I sort of gave up energy drinks and just stick to coffee now. Because I would... You can get it anywhere now. That's... That's... I gotta get some of that. I would do the thing where I'd have coffee in the morning, and then halfway through the day I'd have, like, an energy drink, and so I'd be, like, doubling up on my caffeine per day, and it made me really shaky and hard to get to sleep at night, because your system's just full, full of caffeine. My energy drink of choice was, um, bang, energy drink. They did a thing where... I, I know Monster did it as well, but they did the thing where at, at my community college when I was going there, they had a bunch of, like, bikini babes walk around with a cooler full of bang energy drink, and I'm like, alright, I'll have one, because they were giving it out for free, and then, uh, I was hooked. It's not, like, actually addictive, I just liked them, and I, I thought Monster tasted like rotten apple juice for the most part. Or his bang was like busy and nice. Bang cherry blue lemonade. I really liked the. I I really liked the mango energy drink, uh, the mango bang. I thought that was a good one. What, what was it? The Didn't the, the guy who owns Bang get into some sort of, like, legal trouble or financial trouble? I'd have to look that up. Oh, yeah, it was like... They, they advertised that they had, like, super creatine in it, right? And super creatine isn't a thing, so I think they got into some uh, some trouble for marketing uh, an energy drink with an ingredient that didn't exist. They don't sell Bang anymore, yeah. But uh, when it was around, I, I chugged that, chugged it probably once or twice a day, which was really bad. Mountain Dew Code Red. Isn't Mountain Dew already, like, super caffeinated? I, I think in other countries it has so much caffeine that it's it has to be marketed as an energy drink anyway, just because it's probably the most caffeinated soda that isn't marketed as an energy drink right now. And then there was that, um, that Panera Bread drama. Where Panera Bread was uh, selling like super lemonade, and some girl had a heart attack from uh, drinking uh, like your triple your daily dose of caffeine from a lemonade that they didn't market as having caffeine in it. 
So, it's... Do the do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically a four loco if you put vodka in it. Uh, four locos are... Oh, they're nasty. I've had a few four locos and they're not... They're, they don't go down easy. And I really don't know why you would drink it anymore, because they took out the caffeine from it anyway. I'm sure somebody still has like an old palette of four locos before they changed it. And they're just sitting on it like a Magic the Gathering alpha to set box. <laughs> Five dollars and one four loco. Yeah, they they were cheap. I, I mean, they still are cheap. Yeah, old four loco. I never, I I never had a four loco until after they had changed it, but. I, I don't think mixing alcohol and caffeine is the greatest idea. Like the Panera Bread Lemonade? Yeah, that killed a few people. I'm at like here, let me see. KC KC Kraken. 5959. Well I'm thinking if I get a Kraken task after this. Because this is my second um What's my beverage of choice right now? Um I like most of the time I just drink coffee in the morning. But on the weekends I like to get um uh Elysian Pale Ale. It's like a... It's an IPA thing, and it's like... IPAs used to be... I'm sure IPAs are still kind of considered snobby. Uh, but I, I like them. Uh, just like bitter beers, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also um, something they sell where I'm at called Mango Cart. And it's it's a mango flavored beer, and I'm I'm a sucker for mango stuff. Yeah, this is a thermonuclear dust devil. Um, IPAs because they sell around me. Yeah, I I mean, if you're in the Central Valley, you have plenty of breweries, but isn't the Central Valley more like um, wine and stuff like that, where they do breweries? What am I doing running under it? I am in California. Um, I'm out in, like, the, the Inland Empire area. It's nice this time of year, because we get plenty of rain, and so the, the hills turn really nice and green. Um, most of the year, it's just dry and everything is a fire hazard, but when it rains and everything sort of blossoms back into life, because it's, it's out in the desert, so you gotta take the greenery when you can get it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, it's like anywhere else, really. If I lived in the middle of the country, I'd be worried about toma <laughs> tomatoes. If I lived in the middle of the country, 
I'd li I'd worry about tornadoes. If you live on the west coast, you worry about earthquakes and fires. If you live on the east coast, you worry about hurricanes. It's really just uh, pick your poison, really. Ah, West Virginia, how's that? I have a... well, I had an uncle. Unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, oh, Marino. That's not too far from where I'm at. I'm not going to dox myself, but I'm sort of in that same area. Uh, I had an uncle that lived in Rhode Island, uh, but I've, I've never been to, like, anywhere... I've never been anywhere south of D.C. on the East Coast, unfortunately. I'd love to get out there more. I mean... Uh, a lot of times people are like, I want to travel, I want to go overseas to a new country. But the way I look at it is, there's so much of America to see. I might as well just travel around here first and see all there is to see. Because I really want to, I want to head to Louisiana, I want to head to Florida. Just uh, have some, have some fun. A little closer to home. I think that would be a good good place. I've I've only ever been to New York and then DC. New York was for like a, a school trip back in high school. Yeah, and then DC was um DC was just a a, com a business conference that I got to tag along with. Yeah, Europeans, I mean in Europe it's really easy to travel and with the whole European Union thing, you, like, everywhere is connected by train. You can get anywhere pretty easily. Um, which also... Which also, I think, happens... That's also why I think they have... West Virginia has a lot of stuff you gotta watch out for, like, Mothman. I love Mothman. I love all the, the urban legends uh, in America. Like, uh, Mothman, the Jersey Devil, uh, uh, the, the, the Zone of Silence in New Mexico, I think it is. Yeah, it is six-hour drive to, to, from, like, L.A. to San Francisco. Um... I think that's also why, like, you know, people make fun of Americans for, like, only speaking one language. But, like, you can, if you live in the middle of the U.S., you can drive for hours and hours and hours, and everyone speaks English still. Whereas, like, in Europe, you go, like, a 30-minute train ride, and you're in a new country. What other cryptids are in West Virginia? Because I've only ever heard of, um, Mothman... And then I think the what was it? There was a cryptid channel I watched. There was that one, um, uh, this that one alien thing that turned out to just be like an owl. I gotta resupply. I'm taking way too much damage. I'll stick for a few more kills. I'd love to see Florida, especially like the Florida Keys, because where I grew up, you go to the beach and it's like mud, mud water and city runoff, and you can, you can be in like three feet of water and you can't see your feet through all the muck. I want to go somewhere where you can like have really nice clear water and see everything through it. The Grafton Monster, Unga. Flatwoods monster. That's the one I was thinking of. The the Flatwoods monster and then the blue devil. I have not heard of most of those. But uh I I was convinced of Bigfoot's existence for the longest time. North California has really clear water. Yeah, I mean um, even, like, uh, more central California has some really nice surf, surf towns. Too cold to swim, though? Yeah. 
There's a whole bunch of surf towns around uh, California. It's got a nice, a nice culture. Uh, I helped a friend. Uh, I never surfed myself, but I had some friends who uh, who would surf. I had one guy who I helped him uh, carve out a surfboard, and um, I, I was always good with like videos and stuff. So while they would surfing, I would take my dog to the beach and I'd film them. <laughs> It's, uh, it's pretty boring. It's, it's, I'd say surfing is like fishing a lot of the time. Not so much in, like, what you're doing, but you're just sort of waiting for something, uh, you're sort of waiting for the right wave. You're waiting for a fish to bite, you know? It's a lot of waiting and, uh, knowing what to do when the action actually does start happening. And there's a... A very intense surf culture of like who should take a wave first, uh, who you sort of let go in front of you, who you go before. I never really understood it because I didn't surf myself, but uh, surfing for me, I live in one of the surf capitals in the world. Yeah, the ocean is terrifying. I would have, um, you know what it was for me was the Discovery Channel. Because the Discovery Channel, every year they would do Shark Week. And Shark Week was just propaganda by the anti-ocean establishment to make every child who watched it terrified of sharks. Even if they lived in the middle of the country, they would still have nightmares about sharks being in their bathtub or swimming pool. I swear, Shark Week did so much damage to the collective psyche of anyone who had, like, Regular cable television. <laughs> and then I, I go, nowadays, I see those, um... Like, most sharks are not, like, predator... They're predators, but they're not, like, threatening to humans. Like, uh, like, nurse sharks. Nurse sharks are scary because they, um... They come in big packs, and there's a whole bunch of them, and they're pretty big. But, uh, you really get into it, and their sharks just sort of slurp up crustaceans and octopus and stuff like that. Went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and they said we have some of the deepest underwater ridges in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, um... Oh... Uh, I think it's between San Diego and Catalina, there's like a huge trench. Um, I remember because uh, on, on holidays, I think on Easter a lot of the time, or around Easter, my family would go on a boat and we'd go uh, deep sea fishing. And I'm like, how can it be deep sea? We're like half a mile offshore. And the boat driver's like, yeah, no, it goes down, like, uh, 5,000 feet here. And I'm like, I'm gonna wear a life vest this whole time. I'm not taking it off for any reason. Same thing with cruises. I, I never want to go on a cruise. Because if you go overboard on a cruise, especially at night, you will just disappear. Cruises are terrifying. I think the only... I uh, I don't think it was a cruise, per se. A cruise, really, but... Um, there was that time I went to Alaska. And we took a boat out uh, to look at some, some glaciers. And that was neat. So, stuff like that where, like... It's a, a thing you can only see from a boat, really. Because you can't really hike up to a glacier. There are some that you can, but a lot of them are on the water, and that's where the action happens, as you can see. The ice sort of fall into the water there. But, uh... Yeah, it's... It's, it's terrifying to know that below you is just infinite darkness or practically infinite darkness as far as you're concerned 
and you have to stay on the surface, which is like the most exposed place you can be. I do like fishing, but for the past, like, ten years, I've stuck to freshwater fishing. No, me neither. I couldn't stand deep oceans. But freshwater fishing is nice. You, know, you go to a nice stream, you sit down, you... For me, it's it's all about the gear, you know? It's, uh, it's like a puzzle. You gotta figure out what kind of fish you're going for, what kind of bait or uh, lure you gotta use for that fish. And then it's all about those uh, intricate little knots you tie. I'm sure I'd like fly fishing too, because fly fishing is, like, a lot of the time, fly fishing is about, like, uh, making those very intricate uh, lures. Go up to Tahoe sometime and do fishing for the spring? No, it's it's pretty easy to get into to fishing. I mean, there's a high, like, knowledge ceiling, and there's all these guys who will be like, I got my fish radar, and this can read the life signs down to 100 feet underwater, so I know exactly what I'm catching. But all you really need to do is, like, Get go to a local like hunt and game store, and just start talking to the the guy behind the counter and be like, hey, what's biting this time of year, and what kind of uh, what kind of tackle? And the great thing about like fish and tackle stores or like bait and tackle stores is they're they're always happy to talk about fish. I mean, that's their whole life. They that's what they do for fun, that's what they do for work. They'll they'll always give you the time of day and be like, Oh yeah, this spot's pretty nice and you should use this kind of bait and this kind of lure. Uh, so you... Uh, most of the time, people who are really into fishing are happy to share. Uh, especially with someone who's just getting into it. And give me the pet. Have ourselves some angler fish. Yeah, it's it's nice. And even if you don't catch anything, you just uh, say, "All right, well, I spent a day out in nature, relaxing," and that's that's always good for you too. It's a. Uh, what the that guy Ron from uh, Parks and Recreation? It's like meditation, but you still get to kill something. And uh, I mean, a lot of freshwater fish are pretty, pretty easy to uh, to clean and cook and everything. Um, sometimes. They can be hard to to, uh, to work with, especially if you get like a fish with a whole bunch of bones in it. Then it can be a little bit harder to prepare. Um, but if you're just like fishing for trout, uh, that's a that's a pretty good eat, and it's a uh, pretty easy to uh, pretty easy to make a nice meal out of that. Or if you want, you can just do catch and release, which is. Um, when I was in the Boy Scouts, that's what we did. A lot of lures. It's almost trout season, yeah. That would be a that'd be a nice trip to go on. Um, what we would do in the Boy Scouts is uh, the rule was if you kill it, you have to eat it, right? But most of the time, what we do is we take those little hooks, and the hooks have barbs on them so that the fish stays on once you hook them. Um, and we just take a pair of pliers and crimp down the hook uh, so it didn't have a barb on it and that way it was easier for the fish to get off and you don't hurt it as much. I was not an Eagle Scout. I, I, I never went through to, uh, 
to that level of it. Um, I got distracted with other stuff I was doing in high school. Uh, but my sibling was uh, was an Eagle Scout, and they did their uh, they did their whole track, and I'm really proud of them for that. Um, I kind of regret not getting Eagle Scout, but also I had other stuff going on in my life at that time. So I don't know. It's it's just where do you want to spend your time mostly? I got all the way up to Life Scout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chicks dig Eagle Scouts too. Um, I also had a friend who, uh, who went into the military as a radar tech. Um, uh, we, we joked about him, uh, we joked about, he, he was a radar tech and he got stationed on Flor in Florida. And we joked about him, like, the only action he would see is when he's looking for aliens on his radar. But, uh, apparently if you get all the way to Eagle Scout, there's, like, some benefits if you go into the military. Like, um, I think it was a, either, a you start at a higher pay grade, something like that. But, uh, you know, it, it was a great program. I really enjoyed it. But I was mostly there for the camping and the fishing and all that. Did the stream crash? Um, I'm not seeing anything on my end. Hello? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, maybe the stream is just buffering or something like that, because I'm not seeing any issues on my end. Okay. It had me worried there for a second. And I hit that imbued heart more often. Um, uh, the other thing that I really liked about Boy Scouts was we did um, we did a lot of rock climbing. Um, we would go out to Joshua Tree National Park, and Joshua Tree has some really good rock climbing spots. Uh, I really enjoyed it there. I remember I had... What am I doing this sunny weekend? Um, I'm gonna probably take my dog out to the dog park. Uh, she's been cooped up too much because we, we have had rain and she really hates that. Uh, take her out to the dog park. And then, uh... From there, I'm, I'm probably gonna work on some schoolwork. Uh... I'm in my last semester. Uh, second to last. I have to take, like... Some general education stuff in the summer, but I'm pretty close to graduating. Uh, and then I'm gonna move out of my current place. Oh uh, yeah, some of those older devices get get issues with uh, loading. But I'm probably gonna move out of my my current place, and uh, hopefully I can get a job as a substitute. A substitute teacher um, because <laughs> it sounded like I'm at least 30 uh, no I'm I'm just getting getting out into the world you know finally make taking that next big step and starting a career getting out of college and I spent way too long in college I smoked way too much weed in junior college and spent too long there but once I, uh, you know, buckled down and got a little bit more serious about it, uh, it started paying off. But, um, yeah, because of, um, a lot of teacher shortages, you don't need any, uh, certification to be a, um, a substitute. Who is this? I'm in here trying to steal my kills. Yeah, I mean, community college has that. It's it's nice. It's cozy. Uh, classes aren't too intense, but you know, you gotta move on at some point. Uh, I had I met a lot of good friends in community college and learned a lot. 
but I think uh, it's it's about time to to move on. And also, you know, I want to be able to be a little bit more a um, little bit more sta stable, so I can hopefully go back. What is this guy doing? You did subbing too? That's great. I, uh, I have a roommate who's currently doing substitute teaching. He's going for uh, a master's degree, but also substituting at the same time. And he said that it's, it's worked out really well for him. So, uh, he made it sound like a good choice, and, uh, it's definitely, uh, an option. I do eventually want to go back to school, but I'm kind of burned out on studying at the moment. And also, if uh, there's a an option to be like a sub in residence, so you're you're sort of permanently assigned to a certain school site, and then you uh, you just substitute when needed, and that would be actually a really good option for like getting to know some of the teachers and getting to know some of the administration and maybe getting, you know, full-blown teaching credential and uh, getting a more permanent job as a teacher. But that's what some of my teachers did uh, when I was in high school was um, they worked as a, a high school teacher while also pursuing their master's. And that seemed like a really good... Uh, a really good balance because you know you work during the morning you get up early get a good start to your day uh, go ahead and do your your teaching for the day and then you take uh, afternoon classes or late night classes for it so that's great yeah the, there is really a demand for teachers uh, it's not the most rewarding job in terms of pay, uh, but it's pretty. I'd say it's a it's a it's a good stepping stone for your career, and I think that's why, um, that's why the job is in such high demand, because a lot of people use it as like a, a stopgap to get to their next um, to get to their next career. So you you work as a teacher. And then you figure out, you know, okay, what do I actually want to do? And then you go and pursue that. There's, I don't think, too many people who are... I'm, I'm sure there are people who teach for their whole life, but... Yeah. It's a good way to, to get some experience under your belt. I'm talking like I already did it, but... That's, that's sort of how I'm looking at it, and it's like, it's... It's where I'm going to be for a little bit, and then I'll move on to something uh, bigger and better. I'm going to be right back. I have to uh, get some water and do something, so give me just a bit.
Oi. Okay. We are back. You're an advisor to UC now. That's great. I... I really think the the college system that's going on in uh, a lot of states is good. Uh, that's what my roommate wants to do. He wants to be a uh, a professor eventually, but uh, my my mom worked as a professor. She worked as a, a healthcare. Uh, healthcare specialist for a long time until, you know, some healthcare jobs, it's really physically demanding, so as she got older and it sort of took a toll on her, she transitioned into uh, teaching instead. Um, which I think is really good. Uh, the, not just that, like, uh, people, the school systems are looking for people who are good educators, they're also looking for people with, uh, uh, good experience in the field and that helps um, that helps with the teaching of the next generation of uh, you know whatever it is I also really like the uh, the idea of uh, trade schools I think trade schools are really great there are so many well-paying really good uh, like uh, like a buddy of mine who lives in the northeastern area like Washington um, Oregon area he's a welder and he makes bank it's really demanding work and it's not it's not really the safest work when you get down to it but um, but he makes bank and he's he's really good at his job I think trade schools are a really good option for people especially if they're they're like hey I just want to get out there and into the world because uh, you don't want to end up like me, where you spend way too much time in the, uh, you spend way too much time in education, and you are sort of lacking as in work experience. Because I, I mean, I have work experience, but it's not the field that I want. I, uh, I worked as a, a couple of restaurant jobs, worked as a, a busser, bussing tables. And then I worked as a, uh, a host, you know, seating and stuff. Then eventually I moved to the back of the house and I worked as a fry cook for a bit. Um, but I nearly sliced... Uh, I nearly sliced... What? What is up? Uh, my dog barking. I nearly sliced off the end of my thumb working as a fry cook because I had very little kitchen experience and so I didn't really know how to handle a knife safely. Um, which I think is something you gotta think about before getting into a, a, a job like that. Is uh, It's not just about like, oh, do you have the skills to... Uh, to do the job, it's do you have the skills and the knowledge to do, to do the job safely, because you're working with, uh, with knives and things like that, you could get hurt, and you're more of a danger to yourself when you don't have the, the skills and the know-how. But I enjoyed it. Uh, I never want to eat chicken wings again because I handled so many pounds of chicken wings uh, that it, it started to put me off of it. Sliced your finger at a bakery in Safeway? <laughs> Yikes. That's a. Uh... It's a scary thought. Is the chat working? I uh, let me test it. I don't think the chat is showing up on screen anymore. Yeah, refresh. 
refresh from current page. There we go. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we're working now. Those deli slicers, those, those scare me. Um... Because they, they do not care what goes in there. They're going to cut it to a millimeter thickness no matter what goes in. Could be your finger, your shirt. Yeah, I kitchen machinery really taught me that like having short hair is really beneficial when you work in a kitchen. Because anything could get caught in kitchen machinery and just pull you right in. Come on, give me the pet. 52 more chances. That's the way you gotta look at it, is it's not about being over the drop rate or under the drop rate or anything like that, and it's about how many chances to get the pet do I have before I have to get another Slayer task. But I really would like to get Thermi before... I'd rather get Thermi sooner or later and go dry on Kraken, because this task is really not the most engaging boss ever. You want Ardeo Pet? That's a good one to go for. I, I was going for um, uh, Calvarion a while back. I have about a thousand kills of Calvarion. Um, but wilderness pets are scary. Uh, what plugin is that with the heart monitor? This guy up here? Um, that's the ping uh, indicator. It shows me uh, if I have a good connection on, on the world. I think it's just called ping indicator? Uh, yeah, ping graph for this one. It's, I use that mostly for, um, for when I'm doing, uh, like, group content, when I need to find, like, group worlds for Chambers of Zarek and things like that, because sometimes I'll see someone that's trying to start a raid, and, uh, I'll hop over to their world and be like, oh, I have 200 ping on this world, I probably shouldn't join this group. Not sure what ping is. Can't wait till next week. Yeah, Varlamore bosses are gonna be really fun to try out. Uh, I, I'm excited for the Varlamore bosses, and it's not—they're not all coming out right away. There's there's gonna be a a couple batches of them coming out. I don't really know what ping is. All I know is that when I have a really high ping, it takes longer for my clicks to register. Um, I think it has something to do with, uh, how fast your internet connection is, uh, to the server. So if you're, if the server's, like, in Europe and you're in America, you're going to have, like, a time delay on your inputs. Whereas, uh... It's going to be a little bit quicker if you're playing on, like, a, a U.S. server. I'm excited for the new hunter method, because... Of all the skills that I've trained, I think my lowest is Hunter, right? Just because it's sort of very repetitive and 
you know, the best method is like Black Chinchampas in the wilderness, and there's only so many times you can teleport out before you're like, man, this is no fun. So I think the the hunter assignment thing is going to be a really good uh, really good way to get through hunter. Sort of more like slayer tasks, but with hunter creatures. So I think that'll be fun. And then of course the Colosseum, which I'm I'm waiting to see how hard the Colosseum is. Currently doing Herby for 99. Yeah, I mean her herbivore is pretty fun. Um it's it's I've done a few and I'm probably gonna do way more because I do want that pet eventually. But uh it's a lot of running around. Good XP, but it's a lot of running around. I bought a ring of stamina. Um, I can't even remember why I got it. I think... Oh, I know why. I got the ring of stamina for uh, 99 smithing, because that was just getting on my nerves. Oh, yeah. How is Herbivore for an Iron Man? I mean, I'm sure it helps because you get a whole bunch of different um, herbs and you really need a whole a whole variety of them. I think the only herbs I care about as a main account are Snapdragons and Ranar because that's the only thing I farm. But, uh, but having to make all of your own potions, I'm sure Herbivore is a, a lot more appealing. I have an Iron Man right now that I just started out in free to play, but I I'm more focused on this main account because I I want to eventually get into the Inferno. My goal right now is finish off Herb Lore and Fletching. Where am I from? Uh, I'm from the West Coast of the United States. I want to finish off Herb Lore and Fletching, and those will be my big buyables. And then I want to do a Twisted Bow rebuild. Iron Man seems really fun. You know what I do? Um, I play a lot of Path of Exile, and there's a similar mode in Path of Exile called Solo Self-Bound, um, which is basically Iron Man. Uh, where it's like no trading, only buying from shops. Uh, you have to make and find everything yourself. Uh, so I really like that style of gameplay. I just, uh, <laughs> it's intimidating to, uh, to start a whole new account. Nice, from Finland! How is it over there this time of year? Right now, where I'm at, we're just getting the last bits of uh, rain for the winter. Uh, very early spring rains, so it's it's nice and green and everything's blooming. Yeah. I mean, if you're living in a place where it's typically cold, it might be a benefit for a little bit. Uh, I think people who live closer to the equator are feeling, feeling it worse. Wasn't there... there was that big um, worry about, like, that... Uh, was it, like, the, the stream something... Some ocean current that was like stopping and people were like, it's going to make all of Europe freeze because they're not getting any more warm water. I don't know how true that is, I just remember there being a, uh, a big panic about this uh, major ocean current slowing down or stopping or something like that. Well, 
Florida water was boiling this past summer. Oh, yeah. Don't they have, um... Isn't the, the newer problem the algae blooms? I, re I remember watching a thing about, like, so much algae will grow in an area so quickly that it, like, suffocates the water, and nothing can... It takes all the oxygen out of the water, and fish and things like that can't breathe anymore, because all the algae's using up the oxygen. There's something like that. Maybe the algae was toxic. I... Things are getting weird, and they're only going to keep getting weirder, unfortunately. In in brighter news, I, I did also... There is an interesting thing I saw about... um. There's an interesting video I saw on the Great Green Wall of Africa. It's like this big project to like, at the bottom of the Sahara Desert, they're building like a lot of green spaces and like agricultural stuff that's like self-sufficient so that the desert stops spreading south. It was really interesting to like, trying to build basically a wall of forest along the south border of the desert so that it stops going more south. Which is a, it's an interesting idea and apparently it's working out pretty well. It's like, not only is it like stopping uh, a lot of uh, stuff, a lot, it's, it's like reviving a lot of farmland so that it's not just like, oh, we're bringing back nature, they're also bringing back, um, like agriculture to these areas where agriculture kind of dried up because of the drought in the desert. So that's a neat one. Yeah, the desert is growing pretty fast, so. There's a lot of stuff that's, like, concerning. When I was a kid, I was worried. I really liked Joshua Tree, because I thought they were just the coolest looking trees. And I heard somewhere that they, uh, they were going extinct. And I'm like, why is this? And it's like, oh, well, this plant only grows at this certain altitude with the certain conditions, and you can't really transplant it anywhere. I'm like, oh, that's too bad. But, uh... It, even though things look bad, it's worth trying to hold on while you still can. I really like the, um... Uh, what was it? There's, there's, uh, national parks, state parks. Yeah, national parks are great. That was, that was another thing I did a lot as a kid is, um, I would go to Arches National Park and like Zion and Yosemite. Uh, cause my dad actually, um, which one is a half dome in? That's Yosemite, right? The big like rock climbing attraction. After college, my dad decided that he was going to um, just spend a year rock climbing. And so he went out to uh, Yosemite and just climbed every rock face there was there. Uh, it's really great to see, like, um, these little pockets of nature being protected. And even there's, there's even... Uh, this effort now to like build na natural bridges i think uh like natural bridges over over uh like freeways and stuff so animals can actually migrate back and forth yosemite in winter is really nice um what was the i think it was the grand tetons i think those were the mountain ranges we were by and that's still something I want to do. 
Yeah, Grand Teton National Park. I do want to go, if I'm ever going to do like a mountain climbing thing again, which I really hope I do get the opportunity to do, I'd want to do the Grand Tetons, um, one of those peaks, because it's just, it's a beautiful area, and it seems like, it, it, it seems doable, you know? There's, there's some, uh... Some things like you don't want to go straight for Everest right off the bat. You want to go for a more, uh, more achievable place where if if you do run into some issues along the way, the search and rescue team doesn't have to go so far to get you. Like I'm not expecting that like something horrible will happen on a a climb like that. But uh, it's it's reassuring to know that if something bad does happen, you're a little bit closer to a hospital. But there's all sorts of hills. I mean, uh... I'm pretty close, I mean, to Big Bear, and Big Bear is not like a national park, but it's a really nice, it's a really nice place to be. Um, a lot of good hiking up there. I mean, most people go up there for the skiing uh, and snowboarding and stuff like that, but even in the, the summertime, it's nice and cool there. Um, there's plenty of places to, to explore and... Uh, what my, my parents do is they're really big into ballroom dancing, so they go up there for the, uh, the Oktoberfest they have, where uh, everyone dresses up in their German clothes and drinks beer and dances. It's a, it's a good time, so. Big Bear's a, a nice little location. Oh, the Jackie and Shadow? They have... Um, I didn't- I know they have, like, live footage, but I didn't know they had bald eagles and Big Bear. They have, like, a camera on their nest or something? That's really neat. Do they have any eggs this year? Are they, uh... Keep and watch at the nest, or what? What time of year do they have eggs? Really, I'm not sure. But that's a I watch them every winter. Yeah, that's great. The only time I've seen a bald eagle in the wild was in Alaska, and it's it it was really incredible to see. Uh, bald eagles in Alaska because it was like when I was up there it was right at the end of the um right when like the salmon you know how salmon will uh they'll swim back upstream to lay their eggs it was right around the end of that time so it was just a whole bunch of salmon in the lake and the bald eagle was uh, just having a great time living the best life as much salmon as it could eat uh, but that's the only time I've ever seen one in the wild. I think that's a, that's a really great experience to see. <laughs> Happy the U.S. didn't choose the turkey as the national animal. Yeah, that was being proposed at some point. Turkeys are, uh... Turkeys are sometimes smart, but most of the time really dumb. And there's a uh, the that story about um, the first California flag and how uh, the Spanish looked at the California flag and it was like, "Why did you put a pig on there?" And they're like, "It's not a pig; it's a bear." I I hate turkeys. Not because they're bad animals or they're anything uh, to do with, like, conservation or anything like that. I hate turkeys for a very personal reason. And that is because when I was three years old, 
I went to the zoo and I got a hot dog because I loved hot dogs. And I walk up to a cage and look in and there's a turkey in there. And the turkey reaches its skinny testicle looking face out of the cage and steals my hot dog right in front of me, right out of my hands. And I have never forgiven them and I will never feel bad for eating them at Thanksgiving. That one turkey instilled in me a hatred so fiery red. <laughs> Have you ever watched, um, there's a channel called Ordinary Sausage, where he makes, sometimes he does, like, normal sausages, but most of the time he does, he just grinds up, uh, the most obscure ingredients and turns them into sausages and eats them and rates them for your convenience. I, uh, I watch his channel religiously because I want to see what crazy food item can be turned into sausage next. Costco dogs at 150. Costco is uh, I I go to Costco probably once a month to pick up stuff. I really like their um their chicken wraps or no chicken bakes. That's what they're called. Uh, they have like I don't know what kind of it's like Parmesan seasoning or like alfredo sauce and chicken in a, a bun it's really good but i i i have this i don't like going into the costco because i go with my roommate and we pick up groceries um but i i feel really embarrassed when you know they have those free samples and there's like an employee giving out free samples to something and there was this one time where it's like, oh, try this. It's like a, an herbal shot with, like, a bunch of vitamins and stuff in it. And I took it, and I had it, and it was the most bitter thing. I was not expecting it to taste like it did. And I made a face at the lady, and I'm like, Ugh. And clearly she saw that, like, oh, I really hated that, and that's really bad, and I'm probably not going to make a sale of this product to this guy. But, like, knowing that, like, this lady gave me something, and then I immediately made a, like, a, a horrible face at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pay the membership to be in there. You gotta get the most out of those, those deals at Costco. The thing is, I, uh, I currently live in an apartment, uh, with, like, five other guys. No, it's four... It's five people in total, so I'm not big on using the communal fridge. I have a little mini fridge that I use, though I can't keep too many groceries fresh, so I usually don't have uh, enough room for the quantities that Costco sells it in. But Costco's fun. It's uh, it's a nice day trip. Usually, what we do is um, there's a pet store across the street from Costco, so my buddy will go in and get groceries, and he has a pet uh, snake, and so I will go over to the pet store and pick up pet supplies for my dog and for the snake, and he'll get groceries, and uh, we'll just meet back in the middle. I also like going into the pet store because it's like it's like a free zoo. It's not great because a lot of times they have like 
six or seven leopard geckos all in the same cage, and it's like, that's not great. Or they'll have, um... I mean, this pet store I go to is usually pretty good about it. Uh, the one thing I noticed is they never leave the, uh, the turtle cage locked. Yeah. They, they never leave the, the turtle cage locked, so if someone tried to, uh, go in there and just grab a turtle and stick it under their shirt, they probably could. I remember I took a girl for a date. There's an uh, exotic fish store. There was a little breakfast place that I liked, and I'm like, oh, let's go to breakfast there. It'll be fun. And then I'm like, you want to see something cool? And we walk down this strip mall, and I'm like, I present to you a free aquarium. And we just went inside this tropical fish store and looked at all the uh, the tropical fish. Because it's, it's like a free aquarium, except you have to buy something or they get mad at you. Whoa, whoa. I'll, I'll alt tab there for a second. I'm gonna resupply. Oh, for sure, Bubba. Thanks for stopping by. It was a pleasure talking to you. I'm just gonna probably finish up this uh, Slayer task and then end stream. Uh, Torgaz. Okay. Portogaz. I will go ahead and add you then. Well, thanks for stopping by, and uh, I'll see you in game if I see you. If you want to raid or do something like that, that'll be fun. I'm just uh, trying to make enough money to uh, get a Tebow rebuild going. Uh, but thanks. Have a good night. Oh, tortugas. Tur turtles in Spanish. Okay. I remember that from uh, from Breaking Bad. That was a good show. It was an incredible turnaround for Brian Cranston to go from, uh, from Malcolm in the Middle to uh, Breaking Bad. And the guy who plays um, Hank Schrader... Uh, I'm forgetting the actor's name, um, but the actor who played Hank Schrader also played like a cop or, or like an insurance agent in the Tremors television show. Uh, the Tremors movies are really campy and sort of silly, but the Tremors television show was awful. So it's really fun to see like these these actors with their sort of less uh less critically well Malcolm in the middle was sort of critically acclaimed but these uh actors from uh very fun and sort of lighthearted media showing up in uh in Breaking Bad uh, a very clear break from their previous work And we are a bullseye lantern, unfortunate. Twenty kills left. Call it a stream. That'll be nice. Oh, 
onyx bolt tips, nice to see. Was really doing some fairly bad kills due to uh, chatting with the uh, with chat there but we are about to finish off this task and then hopefully we can get a cracking task because I am due for that pet almost double the drop rate by now when we'll get it. If I keep saying that we'll get it next kill, eventually I will be right. Smoke Devil. I'm just waiting for that uh that collection log to pop up. Mystic Fire Staff. Okay. We're going to end off at 3,579. Unless we get the pet before then. Potato, thank you for that. Remember to hit the impute heart. And now. I wonder when the uh, the magic damage bonus thing will be rebalanced, because they did mention they want to move a lot of the magic uh, bonus off of the occult necklace and onto other pieces of magic gear. So I'm wondering when that will be. 
And I gotta remember after this uh this task, I gotta refill my saying staff. Just a typical coin drop. Thirteen more chances at the pet. Rooms, not what we're looking for. Wouldn't mind a smoke battle staff, that would be nice. And step back and attack. <gasps> Any luck? I got some coins out of it. And catch the freeze. Sometimes you get the freeze, but you don't get an XP drop, which is um, confusing. Mm. You'll be a baby. Three, five, seven. All prime numbers. Maybe this is the one where we get the pet? Grab that second kebab, please. Bullseye Lantern, not great. Could be better. You could also get nothing here, which is an option. I think the nothing drop is from the rare drop table. You hit the rare drop table, and then you hit the nothing slot on the rare drop table. I think that's what happens.
Five more chances after this. but we'll take it. Had an e-visitor there for a second. Don't know what that was about. I mean, I guess it is fine to just hop around worlds to see which one's empty, but I usually do that out at the door here. I feel like we're gonna end stream uh, after we finish this Slayer task because I'm getting kind of tired of chatting away. step back. Yep. And there we go. Three kills left. I don't think I'll get it in three kills, but we can see. Switch to the saying staff. This guy's balling with the shadow. I do want to get my Tebow rebuild done sooner rather than later. Although I am worried that. Um, the Tebow will keep going up in price. I know that it's it's definitely going to rise. It it has been rising because Varlamor is coming out and people are expecting it to be good. Which it probably will be. But I'm going to wait for it to dip, hopefully under 1.5 bill. Because uh, if it dips under 1.5, I can pick one up pretty easy. I mean, not easy. I'd have to sell a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, most of my bandos uh, Well, all my bandos, all my uh, Virtus, all my uh, crystal stuff.
the Soul Reaper, most of my melee gear. It would be a lot of stuff to sell if I want to get that Tebow. But, might as well. And that's a Slayer task complete. Uh, couldn't hurt to go just check, see which, um, what Slayer task we have next. Or at least try to get a uh, Kraken task. Alright, give me to Dairy Dell. And Kraken. Spiritual creatures. I'd rather not. Kraken. Oh, Thermi, yes. Let's do 50 of those. Okay, great. Well, I have some more Thermi to do. It was pretty quick. It only cost me 30 points to get another task. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to continue streaming it tonight. Um, I think I've had my fill of streaming. Thanks, everyone who stopped by. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I don't know what else to say. It was a great stream today. Thanks for everyone who chatted. We had some nice conversations. Um, and until I see you next time, have a wonderful rest of your day.